I've been in two fights in my life. Not play wrestling or friendlies, but two genuine fights. One of which took place when I was pretty young with the man I now refer to as my best friend. However, back then our relationship was extremely different. I don't really remember why we fought, but he put me down really fast and beat me to the point that I didn't have energy to hit back anymore. The second fight took place in eighth grade, near the end of the year. It was with an old baseball teammate. And after about two seasons of built up tension, right after the final practice of the year, we both decided we were done with each other and fought behind the dugout. Although I was pretty small in middle school, my teammate was small as well. For those of you who have not seen a fight in real life, it's not what you would expect at all. It's hair pulling, cheap jabs, grappling on the ground and wrestling. So, with the rest of the team cheering in the background, I managed to pin him on the ground. And just as the fight seemed it was coming to the end, I got punched right in my teeth. I was unimaginably mad. And even though getting punched in the faith is bound to happen in a good fight, in the end, the fight was broken up by the rest of our teammates. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Henry Nally, and I'm a junior. And as a little side note to those two stories, I've made up with both of those boys, and I don't ever recommend getting into a fight. It's never worth it. The consequences outweigh the benefits by a lot. The greatest fighter of all time, Mike Tyson, once said, everybody's a plan until they get punched in the mouth. In the heat of a fight, you think you'd be calm, looking cool for everyone, but the moment you get hit, you lose your grip on your words, your emotions, your actions. And although this may sound like a corny exaggeration, another battle we all fight is the battle within ourselves to follow Christ. You may try to make commitments that you can't stick to, like praying the morning offering, the nightly examine, or going to daily mass. That little punch in the jaw of not being able to live up to the standards you set for yourself is a very humbling experience. For example, last year, I decided to do Exodus 90 with some of my Jesuit friends. And if you don't know what it is, it's basically Lent on steroids from early January to Easter day. Some of these Exodus 90 disciplines include cold showers, no sodas, no sweets or desserts, no unnecessary purchases, no unnecessary electronic usage like watching sports, scrolling social media, or playing video games, and a lot more. For the first few days, I did really well holding up all of my disciplines. After a week or two, I started to burn out like crazy, and I wasn't getting anything out of it. One day, I let go of the no soda rule and ordered a Coke at a restaurant. That was the first job. And later that day, I started to play some video games with some friends and making excuses to not follow any other rules I can think of. That was the hook. And within the span of two days, I had practically given up every discipline I had set for myself. And I continued to live that way for a month and a half before I picked up the disciplines again. I had been hit. I had been lost my plan, and I almost could not pick myself back up again. This brings me to my final point. You're going to get hit over and over in your life, but you must not give up on the faith. You cannot lose your grip on God. In the Old Testament, Jacob wrestled with God himself, begging and pleading for a blessing. And while he was wrestling, Jacob's thigh was put out of joint. But he continued to push and to fight. He never let go of God, which eventually led to God telling Jacob, let go of me, for day is breaking. But Jacob persisted saying, I will not let go of you until you bless me. It was only after this that God blessed Jacob and gave him a new name. From that point onward, God called Jacob Israel, for he would become the father of many nations. What new name does God want to give you in your vocation? What are you afraid of him taking away from you? What is holding you back from bravely entering into the arena and fighting with God himself? Think about this as we finish in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, 
Be near me in my time of weakness and pain. Sustain me by your grace that my strength and courage may not fail. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.